So um, over the pandemic, what we've done is we've changed the way we do our flight test course, um, where in the past we have contracted out to Cranfield and you would spend um, a morning or an afternoon and a couple flights to Cranfield. We've now gone to a residential one week or several five days in Wales um, where we're using UAVs. Uh, and the idea is to, to do the same thing you would do in Michigan or Cranfield. It's to get experience moving from kind of computer-based and paper-based to what the real world is with aircraft, looking at flight tests and the like. And that's the same thing that the NMC program provides, um, except for the NMC program, it's two weeks, it's more hands-on and the like, but it just gives you an idea. Um, it is part of the professional accreditation of the program in the sense that we are required to do it. Um, and then we are required to make to encourage you to do it. So we've made it a requirement of your course. Now, that being said, it is because it's a week long and whatnot, it's a bit different. Um, so it's now a week long. You've traveled to the site, which is West Wales. Um, do some team building, you do some UAV ops and flight testing, and then a flight testing of a rocket when that works, all subject to weather, and then return. So it's five days. That's actually fairly similar. And Steve will here will brief you in a second uh, from Northwest Michigan over the state. We'll brief you on the second on the week UAV week. Um, but the thing about the Michigan is it adds that man flight experience, which we don't have in our week now. Okay. Um, so just some simple comparisons in that. Uh, what I do need to tell you is those of you who are in second year, because of the logistics and the uncertainty, especially surrounding the pandemic, um, if you want to do the Michigan, you will need to do the flight test course this semester, um, because otherwise we can't guarantee you that it will happen before you finish the Michigan. Um, we do have limited places, and it's just general. Those of you in first year, uh, it's a bit different. Um, if you do it in the summer, and depending on where things settle over the next year, um, you, you may or may not have to do a flight test. You still are welcome to, by the way. But right now, we expect that everybody will do the residential course at this point, uh, save a couple of exceptions. So second years, it isn't a means out of it. It used to be, um, but because of the uncertainty now, uh, we can't do that. Um, that's just a quick overview. Um, anybody here, any questions? Just that I might be able to answer about a residential. Um, when we get to the end, we can talk about it more in comparison. Yeah. Um, so the one in Wales, the residential one, it's included. Okay. So, um, permitting or or technology permitting, I will hand over to Steve. And his presentation. Unfortunately, Steve, they cannot see you. That's good. That's very um, good. <laughs> maybe when we're done, I'll get it so they can see you um, when Dang. we're done sharing the screen. And um, Steve's going to give a quick overview of the flight test and unmanned aerial systems uh, course and experience in Michigan, Northwest Michigan. Now, this has been developed in in consultation with us. So it's designed to meet the same objectives of RAS. So what we're dealing with is just kind of the uncertainty of us switching and the pandemic right now. Maria here is a fourth year student. She did this program in 2018, summer 2018. And she was just after her first year of uni. Um, and I think you liked it, you enjoyed it. Um, and again, Steve will go through it. He'll give you a bunch of background of NMC and the like. And then we'll talk about if you're interested. You don't need to commit to anything today, but if you are interested in what you need to do, what form you need to fill out, and how you need to communicate with Steve. And then Steve and us link together on the hand that. So again, as I said, for second years, this is an additional experience that you can do. Um, and it is, it is fun, it is valuable. It's something that you won't do otherwise in its full set. Uh, for first year, we really don't know the expectations, but right now, just planning, you will likely have to do it. Okay, Steve. Thank you, Peter. Um, can I just check that everyone can hear me? Can you hear Steve? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, coming this morning. And um, my name is um, Steve Ursel. Uh, I run the international program at NMC. 
uh, NMC is Northwestern Michigan College. Um, we, um, we're part of community college, a US uh, government community college, and uh, we are a flight school. We're an FAA approved flight school. Um, so we, um, we have um, our own training aircraft, but we also actually have our own um, unmanned aerial systems program as well. Um, and we have our, actually our own airfield, which is approved by the FAA um, specifically for unmanned aerial systems. So no manned flights can fly into that airport. It's a, it's a grass runway. It's about um, it's about six miles out of um, Traverse City. Um, and that's where you'll spend some of the, the, the program if you come to us for, for two weeks. Um, we've been running um, programs and courses with UK universities since 2010. Um, and we've actually had actually we've had more than 200 students over the last 10 years. We, we generally have about 25 to 30 students who come to us each summer from our UK universities. Um, we've been working with uh, University of Manchester and, and Peter um, for the last uh, about four, four to five years now. Um, and we designed this flight test and unmanned aerial systems specifically for University of Manchester students. Um, uh, the presentation here is going to be about 20 minutes, um, so I think I've got about 15, 16 slides. It will just go through the college and it will obviously go through the course. And then, as Peter said, we've got uh, Maria, who was a, a student who came over to us with, I think it was the first group um, three years ago from University of Manchester for, the, for this course. And so Maria is going to give you a student perspective. She's going to tell you what it's really like. <laughs> um, so, um, and then after that, we'll have some question and answer sessions. So um, yeah, I'm more than happy to take any questions and, and go through things. Um, my role at the college is essentially to oversee all the international students. Um, and um, basically, so I deal with all the applications. I will deal with you right from the start. So if you express interest, uh, I'll be the one dealing with your application. I will help you with any uh, visa process. And then when you're at the college, I'm basically there making sure that we give you what you want. And from our perspective, we love having international students over and especially our British University students. Um, we, um, you know, we've had a great partnership over the last 10 years and, and I think the students really enjoy it, but we really enjoy it as well. And our, our flight instructors and our UAS team really enjoy having the you know, the Manchester students over. Um, obviously, the last couple of years, we've had issues with COVID, but, you know, hopefully that's uh, all improving and obviously international travel is getting back. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to seeing everyone next next summer. Um, where we are in the United States, we're in northern Michigan, which is the big red arrow. That's basically essentially where we are. Um, so in the summertime, when you guys come, we have pretty good weather it's normally around 80 degrees and it's sunny so it's really good flying weather um, and it's good for our unmanned systems program as well um, getting to getting to Traverse City um, students normally fly from London or from your home country um, you can fly into one of the main airports Detroit or Chicago or Minneapolis um, I think there's even flights from New York now um, so you fly into one of the main international airports and then you have a second flight, a regional flight up to uh, Traverse City. You can book those flights online. So you just obviously book in that you want to fly from, say, London to Traverse City. Um, it's about a 10 hour um, journey, 10 hour flight. Um, and um, yeah, and we'll be there to, we'll be there to welcome you. Um, it's a beautiful part of the world and a beautiful part of, the, of America, especially during the summer with all the, the Great Lakes, which we have surrounding us. These are just some of the photographs. So Traverse City is um, it's a fairly small town. Um, we have a population of around 40,000. Um, and these are just some of the photographs. It, it is actually um, a destination town as far as US um, citizens. We, we have a lot of people who come up during the summer and you know, have weekends, um, weekend holidays. And you know, it's, it's, um, it's a nice environment. Um, so you know, when you're here for two weeks, it's a fairly small town. We do give our students, our international students, bikes. So you'll be staying in the NMC halls, which is um, in town. 
Um, and so we give you a bike on orientation day and that's uh, your means of travel and getting, getting around. And it's, um, yeah, it's great. It's great for getting to flight school, but it's also great just if you want to go downtown or you want to go to the beach. Um, it's a good way of getting around. Uh, in the winter, um, we do get a lot of snow, but uh, you, don't, you guys obviously don't have to worry about that coming in, in July. Um, but yeah, if, we, if I put some photographs up in the winter time, you would have a lot of white, a lot of white pictures. Um, these are just photographs of, uh, well, the middle photograph is Traverse City. You see Traverse City Airport right bang uh, in the middle. Um, and as you see, that's the, you know, part of the Great Lakes. Um, and then all the photographs surrounding are, are photographs of when you'll be flying in our 172 doing the, the manned um, vehicle flight test. Uh, these are kind of some of the views which you'll get from the, from the, air, from the air, aircraft. So it is, I mean, it's a beautiful place to fly. Um, you know, we're we're really lucky to be in this area. Um, you know, where we've got you know some beautiful lakes and um, yeah, you know, just a beautiful area to to fly in, and you know, great for taking photographs and things. Um, so a little bit about the college. As I say, we are part of a, a U.S. government-funded community college. It's called Northwestern Mission College. We have around about six, sixty different degree programs. Um, so we obviously have an aviation degree program, um, but we have a, a business degree. We have a nurse. We have a big nursing program. We also have a big maritime program. So we have a lot of students who come to us who want to become, um, you know, um, sailors. Um, um, so that's quite nice. When you come to the college and when you come to us, you'll be staying in the NMC halls. Um, we've recently, actually, over the last two years, we've just built um, some new halls of residence, which consist of apartments, so four bedroom apartments with a living room and a kitchen. Um, you'll be staying on campus in those uh, in those apartments, and so you'll get a you know you'll get a community college or a U.S. Um, college um, environment and and feel which is it's kind of quite a nice experience as well. Um, so you will be training with other US um, students as well. So the aviation school, we are obviously based at the airport. Um, we are top right hand photograph, the blue roof building. And that essentially is our, our, our building, which we share with a couple of other departments of the college. Um, we also have our, obviously our aircraft hangar, which is the building with the white roof just below that. Um, so all your training or the training for the first week in the manned aircraft, that will be um, at this facility. Um, yeah, so you'll, you'll do ground school in the, the ground school classes here. Um, and obviously the flight in the, or the flights in the 172, this will be based out of, of this. Airport. And we're, you yeah, know, again, we're very lucky. We've got um, really, really good facilities. Um, and that's, yeah, that's uh, the nice thing about being part of the, the community college. Um, we have a lot of good resources to, to, to rely on. Uh, this is just a little bit about the structure. Um, we are quite a small flight school in comparison to a lot of flight schools in America. Um, we have about 100, 120 students at any one time, and we have around about 20 uh, flight instructors. Um, as I say, we also have an unmanned aerial systems program. Um, and so we have a separate degree program. It's part of our, part of our engineering program, actually. Um, but we have students who want to come to us to become professional UAS operators. And that's been, you know, we've been running that program for about 10 years. Um, and it's very successful. And there's, there's actually, if, if any of you have looked into that UAS industry, um, it's definitely a growing industry in the aviation sector. And it's something with, which if you're doing aerospace engineering, it's definitely an area which um, you know, there's going to be plenty of jobs in the future. Um, so the second week of the course, first week will be uh, flight testing in the manned aircraft in the 172s. The second week will be um, with our UAS team out at our UAS um, airport, uh, basically flying and training UASs. Um, and we'll also do ground school as well. Um, we actually have, um, yeah, we have actually four British University graduates who have been through our flight program who are flight instructors at NMC as well. They're, they're looking to become professional pilots. And, um, yeah, so I think all four of those uh, will still be working for us next summer. So, um, yeah, you get to meet some of the, the some of our graduates who have also graduated from British universities who have been with us full time. 
Um, so the unmanned aerial system, as I say, we have um, an FAA approved, we're, we're, we're very lucky, we have a FAA approved UAS flight training facility. Um, there's not that many colleges, there's, there's actually not many UAS flight training facilities in the US, um, which have been approved by the FAA. And that gives us the ability to basically obviously fly our UASs in protected um, airspace. Um, that airport is... Um, it's a grass field airport. We own that as part of the college. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so that's where you'll spend um, the second week um, out, of, uh, out of that airport with our UES team. Um, we have a number of different equipment as well. UES is we, um, yeah, we, our, our main um, UES is the UAS uh, Penguin, Penguin C. Um, but we also have um, EBs and DG, DGIs. Um, so we basically do both multi rotor and fixed wing UASs. Um, so you'll get experience with, with both essentially. Um, and what we do do is we keep our training groups um, fairly small. Um, so we will basically do the course in cohorts and the maximum number of students on any one cohort is gonna be 12. And the reason for that is then you get more of a individual um, training. Um, you actually have an instructor. There'd be an instructor between a um, you know, maximum of three students. So you really do get some hands on on training. Um, we will also do some uh, ground school and um, you know, as, as, as part of the unmanned training as well. Um, so these are the courses which um, for next summer, the main one is obviously the flight test and unmanned aerial systems course. Um, and that's for two weeks. Um, it starts, I think, middle of July. Um, and essentially, this is the course which gives you the credits towards your, your degree at Manchester. Um, there are a couple of other options if you want to do more flight training. Um, we do a private license course and we do a flight experience course as well. Um, but the, the, the top one is the, the main course for you guys if you want to gain credit towards your, your Manchester, uh, University of Manchester degree. So the flight test on manual systems, it's basically, it's a two week course and we split the course into um, essentially two weeks. So the first week you'll be doing the flight tests in the Cessna 172s. And we have, um, you know, three pictures there of the, of the aircraft and that's the cockpit which you'll be flying. So the nice thing about this aircraft is you have the um, G1000 glass cockpit. Um, and what's nice about this is you have a little, it does have the, um, the opportunity of putting a little um, data disk into um, the G1000. So um, you'll be paired up into stu two students flying the aircraft uh, at the same time. So you'll have the flight instructor, obviously the, the main pilot, then you'll have one student in the, in the cockpit um, actually flying the aircraft with, uh, with the instructor. And then you'll have the second student in the in the back, uh, basically in the back seat doing observation. And the, the student in the back seat will be basically doing the recording, the, the manual recording. But the nice thing is, is that the students actually, you have a little disc inside the cockpit. So when you finish your flight, you can come back and actually um, you know, analyze the data which is on the disc. So that's where the, um, you know, the flight test and analysis, which will happen in the afternoon, um, that data recording disk is actually really useful for, for that. Um, essentially, that, that week consists of, you'll basically do six hours of flight testing in the one, seven, Cessna 172, It'd be three hours in the cockpit with the instructor, and then three hours um, in the rear seat. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a great course. It's, it's, it's an opportunity for you not only to obviously flight test in the aircraft, but you do actually get that um, experience of actually flying the aircraft as well. Um, so your instructor will, you know, obviously show you how to, you know, control uh, the aircraft, the, the, the different features in the aircraft. Um, so you'll even get the experience of taking off and landing. So it gives you the additional, not just the flight test, but it does give you a feel for um, you know, aircraft uh, performance and aircraft um, dynamics. Um, so these are some of the maneuvers and flight testing data that you'll collect during the, um, during the flights in the 172. Um, so you, you will do um, slow flight, you'll do stalls, 
um, you'll do turns, steep turns, um, you'll do short period um, and you'll do pitch trim. So you'll do all those maneuvers and you'll take data when you're doing those maneuvers. Um, and then in the afternoon, that's when we basically analyze the, the data and, and you know, you know, sort of assess the, the different results. And, and what's nice is that, you know, if we have a group of 12 students, um, you'll all be doing the flying in the morning um, and then you'll all be doing the analysis in the afternoon. So you can kind of analyze and see the differences between different flights as well. So, um, yes, another another nice aspect of the of the course. It won't just be your data you can you can look at. So this uh, the, the other part of week one, which is possible if you, you know, if you if you want to, there is the possibility we have our own seaplane um, and we have our own aerodynamic, um, our, our own um, um, aircraft where we do um, you know, basically aerodynamics um, and aerobatics. Um, and um, yeah, you have the opportunity, if you want to, to organize a flight in any of these aircraft as well. It will be an additional fee, um, but there is that opportunity if you, if you want to do that. Um, we also have our own full-time mechanics, um, and there is the opportunity of spending time with the mechanics out in the hangar. And this is great. Those guys have got a lot of experience, um, and so you can... You can go out and spend time with them when they're doing a 50 hour inspection or a 100 hour inspection as um, just another good learning um, angle as well. Um, so there are those other opportunities. So week two is the, the, the week when you spend time with our UAS team um, and you'll basically be doing um, you know, some testing and performance of UASs. Um, you'll get experience and, and the course is laid out during that week. You will get experience in all the different UASs that that, that we have. Um, so it's a broad experience, but it gives you sort of first-hand knowledge of of how to fly um, UASs, and um, you know, obviously the different aspects of them, and um, you know, how to use the cameras, and and what sort of um, operations you can use them for. So we do actually have partnerships with other universities in the in the US, where we have. Um, you know, agricultural students uh, and we have practical scenario based training um, so it's not just about how to fly the UASs it's um, you know what can these UASs be used for practically in industry um, and so our team will, uh, will will show you that as you go through the through the week um, you know um, and so the nice you know so it gives you not just the flight testing in the manned aircraft but also the flight testing in the UASs as well um, we will also, our US team will do some ground school as well, which will just cover, cover um, US airspace and, and UAV um, rules and regulations. Um, we'll also do group training with the, the factory, the Penguin Sea. Um, so that will be at the latter part of the week. And uh, you know, our team will you know, obviously launch that um, UAS. And uh, again, it gives you some practical experience and some, and some larger UAS um, equipment that we have. Um, so it's great. It's um, you know our, our UAS um, program has been very popular, and um, we have about thirty to forty full-time students, and we've we've had a number of graduates who are now working in the UAS industry. So again, it's another uh, angle of aviation, which as aerospace engineers, there's going to be a lot of opportunity, a lot of job opportunity to to, to you know in the, in the future. So to gain that experience is is definitely a benefit to your careers. Um, so this is just a um, you know page which goes through the dates of the course. Um, yeah, essentially, as I say, we do it in in cohorts. So it depends on obviously how many students are looking to come over. But we have about twelve students in any one group. So the first group which we're looking at having over will be um, arriving on the 9th of July, and it's essentially a two week course. Um, as I say you'll do six hours of flight testing in the 172s and then um, you know, the second week in the UASs. Uh, it also includes ground school. Um, and the cost of that is basically 2,500 US dollars. Um, that also includes accommodation. Um, so the 2,500 is all the training, all the, um, the flights that you'll be doing and accommodation in the NMC halls. Um, what it doesn't include is you will need to have an M1 visa um, and the M1 visa costs 
Um, they're actually a little bit lower than $500. You're probably going to be spending about $350 um, US dollars on the M1 visa. And then obviously you have your flight over to um, the US from America, and you should allow around about $1,000 for that. Um, and then obviously food as well. Food's not included. Um, living costs are about the same as what they are in the UK. Um, and obviously staying in the halls, you'll have a kitchen in the apartment, so you'll be able to you know, um, you know, go to the supermarket and, and you know, sort of cook uh, for yourself as well, which is, you know, saves a little bit of money. So it is a very cost effective course. Um, there's a lot of training within um, within that amount. Um, so I think it's, uh, you know, when we've had students go over, come over before, um, they've all said that it's really good value for money, um, which we believe it is as well. So, um, yeah, we, um, yeah, we hope that students, you um, can uh, you know sort of come over and join us next summer. Um, these are just some other photographs. What we try and do is we give students a little bit more experience as well. So we you know sometimes we just organise a minibus and we go over to the Great Lakes and um, Lake Michigan. We have a, a national park which is about thirty minutes drive from Traverse City. Um, so we try and take students over there. We'll also try and organise a, a barbecue during the two weeks. Um, <laughs> And then we do little trips to other airport operations at Traverse City. So we we now obviously know quite a few of the pilots in, in the area. Um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of just gives you an overview of some of the extra things which we try and put on um, for the group as well over the two week period. Um, these are just some of the other courses which we do. These are for, um, yeah, these are if you want to do more flying and do more specifically more flight training. We have a flight experience course, which is two weeks, and that gives you 20 hours of actual flight training in the 172. Um, and then we obviously do a PPL course, uh, which is a 10 week course. Um, we also do um, a commercial pathway course. Um, and that's for students that want to become you know, sort of commercial pilots. Um, and if anybody's interested, you can you, know, you can shoot me an email and I can send you more details of, of those courses as well. Um, so the next steps, um, really the next steps, I think Peter's um, put on your uh, computer system an expression of interest form. Um, if you can print that off and email that to me, um, it just um, sets out some details. You, it gives, you, gives us your name, your, your email address, uh, what course you're interested. If you can print that off and email it to me by the end of the month, um, my email address is there, sursalatnmc.edu. Um, I will then come back to you. I'll forward you a copy of the presentations and I will give you any more details that you're looking for. And I'll also... Um, explain how to apply um, for, a, for a place on the course. Um, as far as the application, um, we're looking for applications to be submitted um, really by mid-November. I think I've got 10th of November, but I think really mid-November. Um, with your application, you will need to provide a copy of your passport and also confirmation of funding. Um, so it can be a copy of a bank statement. It can be a, a family or sponsors uh, bank statement as well. But those are, are two things which we will need with your application. Um, and then we process and we send you an acceptance letter and then we send you instructions on how to apply for the M1 visa. And I'll be there all the way through the process. So if any of you have any questions um, on any of the, you know, the, the M1 visa application, it is fairly straightforward. There is a process to go through, but it is fairly straightforward and I, I can uh, help you through that process. I will actually be back in the UK in March as well. Um, so I come over in March and really it's to meet all the students who are planning on coming over in the summer. So you will get the opportunity of meeting me and I go through, you know, obviously any questions, any more questions that you have by that time. And I'll go through logistics about just how to prepare for, for coming over um, and say any questions at all, you can email me um, as well. Um, just obviously a little bit about the international travel current status. Um, you probably actually, I think it's just been announced actually, but for the US, obviously international travel is starting to open up a little bit more. Um, the, you know, obviously everyone's been struggling through the whole last two years with the, the, the pandemic, um, but hopefully we're getting past that now. But one requirement now to travel to the United States is that um, you do have to be fully vaccinated. 
Um, so you will need to have proof of vaccination to be able to travel to the US. And um, I don't think that's going to, I think that's going to be in place next year as well. I don't think that's going to change over the next sort of six to, to 12 months. So that is going to be a requirement. You're going to have to have proof of vaccination. Um, just as far as COVID, we, we've actually in northern Michigan, Traverse City, we've been very lucky. We're, we're obviously a fairly small town. And so um, our COVID-19 rates are pretty low in comparison to the, the, the big cities in America. Um, we've had very few cases. The, the, the aviation schools remained. We only actually had to close for, I think we closed for two, two weeks last year, but that was it. Um, we've been open through the whole pandemic pandemic period and we've touched wood, we've, we've had very few cases. Um, so it's been um, you know, good. And that's essentially because we, we're obviously based in a, in a small area, small, small town. Um, and this is really the last slide. We do have obviously a website. You can go to the college website and um, www.nmc.edu. And if you do slash aviation, you'll get to the aviation um, pages. Um, and there is my email address. So any questions at all, um, just email me, sursal at nmc.edu. Um, as I say, if you're interested, please um, fill out the expression of interest form and just email that to me. Or you can just um, send me an email as well. That, that would be fine as well. And I can, I can get back to you. Um, we do really, as I say, right from the start, we've loved having our British University students over. Um, you know, every summer, it's a really good atmosphere. Um, the American students and our, our flight instructors really enjoy the British University students. And and um, you'll be warmly welcomed. Um, we always have, you know, out of the British University students, we always have a very diverse group. So we normally have, you know, at least 50%, which are from other countries. Um, the visas we've, in the 10 years that we've been having British University students, um, we've got a very high, we've only actually had one student that's, that didn't get a visa. Um, everyone else so we've had you know I think we've had over 250 British University students over and we've only had ever had one issue with a with a visa um, so um, yeah that should be pretty straightforward and um, yeah so I uh, yeah hopefully this will be uh, useful hopefully enjoy the presentation um, as I say, I'm happy to answer any questions but I think um, if Maria's around she can um, yeah, if you if you got time, Maria, if uh, yeah. you can go through it from a student perspective. Maria is now going to tell you what is what is really like at NMC from a from a student yeah. perspective. Yeah, just, thank you, Steve. Just before Maria tells you, I just want to tell you all of these. If you're first year, all of the the, the presentation and the form, and Steve's email address and stuff are available on the Mace One Two Zero Zero One Blackboard page under Northwest Michigan Flight Test Experience folder. Uh, for those of you who are second year arrows. Um, it will, I'll put it, it'll be up later on the aircraft performance and design unit page. Um, so you'll have access to all of that. So you don't have to take photographs of any of this, it'll all be there for you. Um, Maria, as I said, went in 2019 or 2018 um, and did the whole thing. She also stayed and did uh, an extra few days in the hangar with maintenance folks. So she'll give me a brief talk about what she liked about it, found useful. Um, and then we can answer any questions. Yeah. Hi guys. So hopefully this is interesting. And um, I shall tell you that my experience is it was absolutely fantastic. Definitely a highlight of my um, um, last four years in, in university. <laughs> um, I never have regretted to go into uh, Michigan instead of staying in the UK. Um, back in my days, we were able to go to um, Cranfield. I know. To, went to Cranfield, but um, the Cranfield experience, um, unlike as I you know, you just sort of get in one of those uh, big aircraft who sit there. Some people, some people get sick because because the uh, pilot decides to go high speeds and to, you know just sort of sit there at the back and, and take data. Excellent, you're in control, and uh, this is something that perhaps I love the most about um, the amount of aircraft that I got to see both at and land, and I got to operate. Is, is beyond the um, I don't think many years is any years at all. Um, come across, especially the UAVs that you would probably see. And um, so you've interacted with as part of, as part of this program, 
um, varying in, in size, dimensions, their missions, and everything. Um, we also got to put together our own uh, little, little craft and pilot it, and our <coughs> aircraft out specifically didn't crash a single time. Many people knew to took two to apart and to put it back together and it didn't crash. So I'm proud of that. So all of that stuff will really be useful for you later on. Um, I'm sure you'll be three or four if you're staying around. But really, it's just it really sets you apart from the clients for different um, um, for different jobs. Really, is maybe a bit of a bit of a, a diversion and excitement. Um, but I was applying for my placement. I got placement as well um, last year. So I sort of technically been in the university for five years. It's my fifth year. Uh, when I was applying for my placement, um, they don't ask you much about your university modules. They ask you about what other things are you doing, like you know, why are you actually passionate about uh, aerospace? What have you done? Sort of hands on what have you done? Um, how, how much do you understand it? If I can be a bit um really help me to get to know my team better to understand the physics behind <coughs> flight, to understand the operations of the aircraft. Um so I I really think I you know, I really benefited from it, and everyone, everyone really enjoyed it. It's a shame I wasn't able to go back for a proper, you know, um, party experience and get my um, get my PPI license once my phone was due. Hopefully, it's important to in life. So that really confirms that you know, first two weeks of your life will be will be absolutely incredible, um, and something that you'll really want to forget. Um, great weather. <laughs> Great weather, <laughs> absolutely loved it. Great people, everyone's extremely supportive. The amount of stuff you get to learn, the amount of stuff you get to do is really it's just, just insane. Um, and again, all that hands on stuff like the first year of university is, is great. I think I've really learned a lot of the theory when it comes to practice and learning computer stuff there. You know, it's really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the courses have changed slightly since last time we've been there. Um, and we also live in the hotel. I think now guys are going to be living in the um, in the accommodation. So I think it's you'll if you'll get to see the campus, you'll actually sort of feel like you're part of it. You'll you'll feel like you belong. Trust me, everyone there, um, all the guys in the front of us, all the sort of members of staff, they'll make you feel like you know you're part of that. Um, um, of that sort of uh, <laughs> place and uh, of that university that. Environment. Um, it's a great place. Make sure you go. Seriously, I've never <coughs> came across people who are friendlier than that. You know, you just get to because I, I don't I don't cycle. I walked every day, day and back. And the amount of people I just met on the street who would just uh, stop and, and just start a random conversation and be like, oh hey, how are you doing? You know, it's a nice day. And you just get you're know, like, what? <laughs> What's happening? But seriously, everyone is, is extremely, extremely, really nice in this gym. The weather is fantastic. I've mentioned. This um the sites that you get to see. Uh, oh, I've got so many photos and it's just it's 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 really, really <coughs> worth every penny uh that you do spend on it. Um, yeah, I'll I'll stop there, but if you have any questions, I'm here. But trust me, this is this is like a really, really great opportunity. And it's just even though now we're focused on the UV sites um, in university, um it's just you can't compare it. You can't compare the two. Any questions, folks, for myself, for Steve, or Maria? So, as I said, yeah. Uh, so, we typically, Steve, what are the number of places that we can accommodate normally? About 12 students if we do two weeks? Yeah, we, two weeks? Yeah, we basically can do, we can do as many cohorts as we want. So, there really isn't a limit to how many students we can take. So, but for any one, two weeks, we really don't want to take any more than 12 students. So if we have 12 students, if we end up having 20 students apply, we'll probably split them into two, two groups. So one, one, you know, one 10 group of students will come the first two weeks, and then we'll have the other 10 students come the, the following two weeks. And that, that's purely just so that we, we, you know, the students then gain you know, sort of more individual experience, you know, especially with the UASs. If we if we had 20 or 30 students in the UAS um, field and, and training out there, they wouldn't get as much experience. So we like to keep the groups smaller and then you'll get more hands-on 
flight time um, with the UASs at that point. So yeah, it's, um, it'll be 12 per two weeks, basically. Yeah, so so obviously we can take more. It's just that if we have to, if we get more than 12, the, the dates that you see, that'll be one one set of two weeks and then yeah. follow up two weeks. Would be yeah. two weeks. Um, and we so have, oh, yeah, sorry. So I was going to mention, we have, I, I think I had one slide and I've just got a photo just talking about the first week where we do the manned aircraft. That's, that's the same again. If we have a smaller group, then obviously we, you know, we can we can make sure the flights uh, are going at the same time so then everyone can look at the data at the same time. Um, I also going to mention that, you know, I talked about the extra flights. We, we do, we have had students that, um, you know, obviously asked to do a flight in the seaplane. Um, and just to explain, we're, we're, there's not too many flight schools in the US that have a seaplane. So what I would say is if you're going to come over and join us, I would definitely encourage students to do at least one flight in the seaplane. Um, I think it's about 100 and I think it's about $180 or $200 for, for an hour, but it is well worth it. You'll, you know, you'll absolutely love flying the seaplane and it's, um, you know, there's, there's, you don't get too many opportunities to, 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 to do that. And it's just, again, it's another, another area of experience, which, which you can gain. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> No, unfortunately not, because especially with the fact that we have to just as to protect, we run both both programs. Not right now. That may change in the future, but not right now. So, so if you are a second year arrow, then you will you're you're expected to do both, just because we don't have any protect. If you're a first year arrow, you can do both if you want, but there may or may not be an expectation. It is open to non-arrows. So if you know anybody who's interested that isn't an arrow, they can do it. Um, obviously it's a, you know, not part of the program because it is an experience, yes. So what do you mean in the previous year? The first year arrow, you may do both. So, so everybody is eligible to do our residential program and the NMC program. While they have overlapping learning outcomes and UAV things, they are not identical. And that the NMC is, as we said, is a more hands-on, uh, you, it's smaller groups, you working with, with people more directly uh, for the UAV. And then, of course, the NMC adds the flight, the actual flight experience in the manned aircraft where you spend three hours behind the controls. You can either um, instruct the, the pilot to fly the maneuvers or try flying them yourselves, which is, I think, far more interesting. Um, makes the data noisier, but it is that getting that hands-on loop experience with what you're trying to achieve, what the aircraft does, and then the results. Yeah, I think I think that's something which you know we, we've had a lot of aerospace engineering students over um, with us over the last ten years from the the our partners um, from our partner universities and and the one thing which all the students say is you're obviously all doing an aerospace engineering degree where you do a lot of theory um, so you you learn about you know aircraft aer aerodynamics you learn about stalls. Um, you learn about the critical angle of attack. Um, but if you then actually fly an aircraft, you actually um, get some time behind uh, the cockpit and actually do those maneuvers, then it puts all, it, all the theory then makes sense. Um, so there's, there's an extra benefit of actually, it's not just about the flight testing. And the benefit of actually doing the flights in the 172 is it gives you that experience and it and it puts all the knowledge which you've gained at university or you will be gaining. It makes that more understandable because you can actually see, you know, right, well, this is where the critical angle of attack happens in the aircraft. And this is how the aircraft stalls. Um, so a lot of students have mentioned this to us is that it really helps them with their degree moving forward because it gives you that experience um, you know, of the aircraft and the aer aerodynamics and the different functions of that. So I think there's, there's some added benefits, not just the flight testing, just in, in terms of overall understanding of the theory which you're learning at university. And, and we've had that comment a lot um, with a lot of the students who come over and, and fly the aircraft. They really, you know, they really feel that it's helped them with the theory part of the university degree as well. So that's a, 
you know, it's an added benefit, which, uh, you know, will, will help you through not just your degree, but, you know, through your, through your whole career. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my personal opinion is I, I feel that anyone who's doing aerospace engineering should have some experience flying an aircraft because ultimately you are, you know, you're looking at going into a career where you're going to be designing aircraft. Well, the pilot is a critical person in that process and, and flying aircraft. So if you're designing an aircraft, but you've never flown a plane, I think you're at a little bit more of a disadvantage to someone that has had some flying experience. So, you know, those, those are the added benefits of, of coming to NMC in comparison to doing, you know, the, um, you know, the, the, any flight testing in the UK where you, you, you won't be actually in the cockpit. Okay. I'm just looking at the time, we're kind of out of time. Uh, if you have any more questions about the NMC course, email Steve at sersal at nmc.edu. Um, again, the, his email address is on the stuff on Blackboard for the first year. Second years will be up later today. If you have any general questions about the two options and all of that, you can email me. Um, and those of you who are in second year, you will get a, a detailed briefing on the flight test course in the next few weeks. Thank you very much, Steve.